So I'm now going to invite Chin Wan up on the stage. Chin Wan, you going to come up and join me? Yeah. Um, we are able to give this award because of the generosity of the um, Chin Wan as the, um, who ran the conference committee in Korea in 2014. Yeah? Um, come and join me here at the podium because our winners aren't here. When, they, when we play the video from them, I'm going to come down and sit down. <laughs> um, but we'll give them the award and then we'll go and sit down. Okay? So, and the, um, the person who chairs this, uh, the, the, the web commerce in Korea made a lot of money. <laughs> and um, he, he uh, Chin Wan, donated a lot of that to, uh, some of that to IW3C2 uh, to run the Soul Test of Time Awards, which I think has been a great success. And they also fund the Best Paper Award. That will continue going forward. That's the only reason IW3C2 will exist. Going forward, we'll work closely with the ACM on this, obviously. The chair of the selection committee, this is uh, Yoel Marek, who couldn't be with us, um, but we issued a press release with her quote in it. And if we go to the next slide, we should have, we announced the winners. Uh, oh, what, what? She will be oh, is she online? Yeah, she is. I have introduced, sorry. Yoel, can she hear, can she speak? Hello, 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 where are you? Can you hear me, Wendy? Yes, can't we see awesome. you? Yeah, technology is great, right, isn't it? Okay, Yoel, would you like to, it's lovely to hear your voice. Um, would you like to talk people through the paper selection process? I've put the slide up. Sure, with pleasure, thank you, Wendy. So first, uh, uh, thank you again, you know, Wendy and, and, and Chin Wan for oh. sponsoring that. Uh, you can hear me now, yeah. perfect, yeah. Uh, you know, the, this award has been going for a number of years already, uh, and it's, it's and we're super happy that it's going to continue even if we are moving to to ACM. Uh, it's very you know very special moment happening this year, and I really apologize for not being with you all uh, today. Uh, you know, COVID uh, made me worried about traveling. That's that's an honest reason. Um, actually, I'm losing. I'm seeing myself twice. Uh, can I? That's okay. I guess I, I will continue. Uh, basically, to share with you the selection process, we are we have an esteemed pa uh, panel of, uh, uh, of former um, chairs. Most of them are former chairs, and their list are, is really here, as well as you know some you know famous people from the from the from the uh, the community, and they go through a very very thorough and responsible uh, um, process of reviewing all the candidates. We had seven or eight candidates. Uh, for the Test of Time Award this year, many, many discussions. And, uh, you know, we do that, you know, removing all conflict of interest, et cetera. Um, you, know, you know the deal, you know, how to, how to do uh, these kind of selection uh, processes. And this year we have a, a wonderful winner. Uh, if you want to go to the next slide. Oh, that's me. And, and then is... I think, yeah. Uh, So go ahead, you I should announce it, so when you, you yep. should click. <laughs> so, Chin Wan, would you like to, can you read out the names? They're Japanese, can you do? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the soul. Oh, of, you need to speak into the microphone. Okay. Uh, the soul uh, test of time award, the title was Earthquake Shakes Twitter Users. Real-time event detection by social sensors, and and the authors, the three authors. It was published in uh, World Wide Web 2010. So not exactly 10 years ago, but uh, approximately that uh, time frame. Thank you very much, Chinwan. And on the right is the photo of the award, which will be sent to a, a copy of that, which is engraved. Thank you, my PA Nicola, for sorting all that out. That will be sent to each of the authors. Now we have a presentation. Okay, so I'm going to come down off the stage now. I think. Do you need me to press next slide? No. Right. We can leave the stage okay. now. Have I got everything? Yeah.
So Takeshi, floor is yours. Okay, I'll, okay. I'll, like I said, today I will, I I will give a presentation or I play a video in here. Okay. Sorry. So okay, you so want today, we, we want you want we play the video? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Thank okay. you very much for this. this uh, thank you for very much. I'm very honored to receive such a great award. It's now, 10, it's now 10 p.m. in Japan, and I may not be able to sleep tonight because of this the excitement. So today I will talk about our research, for our essence of our research in my presentation. Okay, play. Can, can, can I, could I, I, I want to play the presentation, presentation video for, for this. We, we, we will play the video for you now, Takeshi. Okay, please. Hi everyone. Firstly, I'm very happy to receive this honorable award. I express our deepest gratitude to the committee. Receiving this award moved me deeply and excited because this was the first paper I wrote in my doctoral program. This paper makes me famous in Japan artificial intelligence community. So I'm still called the earthquake Twitter guy in that community. Today, I'll talk about the summary of our paper and why our research could have been influential. I hope to share with you some valuable insights for your future research. Let me give an overview of our research on the contribution. Our research attempts to detect the earthquake occurrence and estimates the seismic epicenter using Twitter data analysis. This paper was published as a World Wide, World Wide Web Conference 2010. Around 2010, the previous popular social network services, such as blogs, gradually started stagnating, and the new, big new SNSs, Twitter and Facebook, started appearing. At the time, we focused on the real-time nature of Twitter, which is a unique feature of, compared to previous SNS because many users post what happened in the physical world in real time on Twitter, we thought it would make us possible to detect phenomena in the physical world, such as earthquakes by analyzing these posts. The main idea of our research is social sensor. Social sensor is a kind of analogy, which means that earthquake observation by physical sensors and earthquake observation by analyzing SNS data are analogous. This slide illustrates the correspondence between these two observation systems. First, when an earthquake occurs, the observation system by physical sensor collects value from seismic sensors, statistical processes, those values, and detects the earthquake. While the earthquake observation by through SNS earthquake occurred, users post tweets, the system collects positive tweets, and again, statistically process them, and detect the earthquake. We think these two process, uh, processes are very similar. So we define this observation process through SNS as social sensor. Thinking like this, we can apply methods for physical sensor detection to treat processing. There are two challenges in realizing social sensor. One is to collect tweets from users who observed the target event. We call such tweets positive tweets. The other one is to realize observing the target event accurately from noisy information. Our proposed methods solve these two problems. First, first, for positive tweet collection, we adopted the Tekis classifier based on support vector machine. First, we collected tweets containing the word shaking earthquake, and they extract only positive tweets by the Tekis classifier. Second, we employed the statistical approach of geophysical sensor processing for accurate observations. For earthquake occurrence, we create temporal model from the number of positive tweets during an earthquake with an exponential function and calculate the probability of earthquake occurrence. 
from the location estimation, we create spatial model with a particle filter and the estimates the epicenter from the location information of positive traits. Particle filter is an approach often used for location estimation by physical sensors. Here are the experimental results. We succeeded in detecting small earthquakes with a recall of 0 0.9, and the med medium and large earthquakes with a recall of almost 1.0. We were able to detect 80% of these earthquakes within one minute. We were also able to estimate the epicenter with an error margin of about 100 kilometers, which means we can identify the prefecture where the earthquake occurred. So our research made two major contrib contributions at that time. One is to, to propose the concept of a social sensor and establish a method for observing events in the physical world from post on SNS. The other one is to demonstrate that we could observe earthquakes of events in the physical world with a high degree of accuracy. Now let's look at the influence of our paper. Please show this graph. In this graph, the blue one indicates the number of papers that cited our paper. The red bar indicates the number of papers that included the word social sensor in the title or abstract. Initially, as the number of citations of this bar increased, and the number of paper containing the term social sensor also gradually increased. Then the number of citations peaked in 2015 and then declined, while the number of paper including social sensor remained constant. From this, it can be said that the term social sensor became fairly established after our, our paper published. <coughs> Next, we show word cloud of paper titles citing our paper. As a result, the paper is most cited by papers on event detection. We also see that it is cited by papers on situation awareness of disaster and infectious disease status. However, one question arises here. Though there are so many papers on event detection from SNS, why is our paper cited so often? I consider that this is because our research matched well with the big change in the web at the time. The change is from physical to social. From physical to social means the information from physical world is posted on SNS. Around 2010, with the emergence of new SNS, people began to post events in the physical world on SNS in real time. This, uh, this has led to a huge volume of information from the physical world flowing into SNS in real time. This change has expanded the possibility of web mining. Our research had realized this new possibility created by this major change, the observation of physical world through SNS, SNS data analysis. I believe that our research has had a good influence on other research work by presenting a new frontier of research in this way. Finally, let me talk about my prediction for, next for the next decade. This is just my opinion. I believe that there's another new change happening now between SNS, SNS, SNS and physical world again. That change is from social to physical. It means that information on SNS affects the physical world to a uh, more significant degree. In the past, there have, there have been some examples that SNS influenced human behavior in the physical world, such as the uh, Arab Spring, the 2016 US presidential election, etc. But in recent years, our behaviors have become more and more influenced by information on SNS ever than before. Infodemics, purchasing behavior, travel, world, etc. <clears throat> I believe that this change has created new possibilities for web mining. For example, we can consider new research questions related to this change easily. How SNS affects the physical world? Is it possible to predict the next status of the physical world under the influence of SNS? 
is it possible to stop the negative impact of information SNS on the physical world? I think this new change may develop a new research frontier in web mining. So I think web mining research is full of interesting research topics for the next decade. I continue to love web mining research. I hope to continue to promote it in the future. I hope you will join me in making the web conference a great success. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Takeshi, for um, having reflected on um, the importance of your word. Um, so this is the end of the opening ceremony. We would like to thank the entire audiovisual team here, uh, Webcaster, for the amazing work they have done. And they will keep doing in editing all the recording of the sessions. Um, so before we officially close this opening ceremony, I would like to remind you that uh, just now you can join Gavertown for the uh, second part of the job fair. And don't miss the first keynote speaker later this afternoon at 5 will be Prabhakar from Google. Thanks again and um, enjoy the scientific conference. Thank you, everybody.